My name is Walter Kemp. This lecture is going to be on myocarditis. Websites for questions that can be used by medical students for exam preparation are there. On my Twitter handle, I provide unknowns. If you have not viewed the introduction presentation, please do so before watching this presentation so you understand what I'm doing with the presentation. Thank you. And the material contained in this lecture is for educational purposes only and must not be used for self-diagnosis or other purposes unrelated to education. These two images are from a patient with a lymphocytic myocarditis. Lymphocytic myocarditis is most commonly viral in origin. For example, Coxsackie B and A viruses, adenovirus, CMV, and many others, but can also be a feature of a bacterial infection. For example, Borrelia burgdorferi, Lyme disease, or parasites, Trypanosome cruci or Toxoplasma gondii. The characteristic histologic features are a uh, inflammatory infiltrate, which is predominantly lymphocytes, and you can see that in both views, but on the right you can see it really well, the lymphocytes, and then also cardiac myocyte injury. Um, I have some other slides later that show you can easier to see the cardiac myocyte injury than you can here, but with the amount of infiltration that it's, you can see that there's most likely damage to and cardiac myocytes have been lost. Individuals with lymphocytic myocarditis can have a highly variable presentation anywhere from asymptomatic to congestive heart failure to sudden death. Um, and oftentimes, since it's usually viral in origin, they will oftentimes have a viral prodrome, fever, upper respiratory tract infection, infection, muscle aches, things like that. Complications already mentioned, they can have sudden death or congestive heart failure, but about 20% um, or around there will go on to develop a dilated cardiomyopathy. This is another example of a lymphocytic myocarditis. The top two images are from the same heart, and the bottom one I just add in so you can see a good example of cardiac myocyte necrosis. In the top left, you can see a low power view of the heart, and you can see the little blue dots all throughout the myocardium. That is the extensive lymphocytic infiltrate. On the right side is a closer up where you can see the lymphocytic infiltrate, and it's associated with, you can see coagulative necrosis damage to those cardiac myocytes. Bottom left, you can see it really well at the arrow. The myocyte is contracted, uh, loss of the nuclei, uh, infiltrate of the cells around it. So this is an example of a very extensive inflammatory infiltrate. Sometimes though, um, oftentimes though, <laughs> it'll be pretty patchy, um, sometimes not found in any one given section or only in one given section, and only in one tiny part of that. Both of these have a minimal inflammatory infiltrate. In the bottom right, uh, you can see what looks like uh, potentially some dissolution of that cardiac myocyte. Um, so like I said, can be very extensive, can be very patchy. So what is the etiology of this lymphocytic myocarditis? So this was Chagas disease. This is a Chagas myocarditis. Chagas disease affects about one half of people in endemic regions of South America, um, less commonly encountered in the United States, can be encountered, um, but it still can be encountered. Um, most patients with Chagas disease have cardiac involvement, so Chagas myocarditis. Um, and then on the low power view that I just showed you, there's where the organism is in the center of the slide. And then on the right is a close up of that where you can see the cardiac myocyte distended by the trypanosomes. Chagas myocarditis is known for having an apical aneurysm. On the left side, what we're seeing is we're looking down on the um, apical cross-section. So you don't actually see the aneurysm, but you can see the thrombus formation within that aneurysm. And actually the lumen there of the left ventricle is much more dilated than it should be in that given section at the bottom. On the right um, is involvement of a portion of the conduction system, a branch from the AV node. You can see at this power the little blue dots within it. The reason I put this in there is that Lyme disease caused by Borrelia burgdorferi is really well known for involvement in the conduction system. Lyme disease um, occurs in the United States, other countries as well. It's carried by deer ticks, 
in the United States. It's most common in the Mid-Atlantic and New England states, although it can occur in other areas as well, but most commonly there. So what do you see and what is the diagnosis? So this is a hypersensitivity myocarditis. The most common etiology for this is a drug exposure. On the left side, um, we see a low power view and you can see the characteristic perivascular distribution of the inflammatory infiltrate. On the right, it's more close up. You can see all the little red dots. On the right, all the little eosinophils. Also within the vessel on the right, you can see thrombus formation. So hypersensitivity myocarditis can be very variable too. Um, every time I've seen it, it's just been an incidental finding, but it is also possible for it to um, trigger potentially uh, ischemic injury, um, infarction, and uh, potentially death. Um, as I understand it, there's an eosinophilic myocarditis, which is usually commonly associated with hyper eosinophilic syndromes, and is much more significant. And as with everything in medicine, there is um, a spectrum, I'm certain. Um, but hypersensitive myocarditis is in Robbins. So what do you see? So this is contraction band necrosis, which is also listed in Robbins under, myocard under myocardial injury, disease of the myocardium, so I thought it would fit in with this lecture. Um, contraction band necrosis is commonly ischemic in origin, um, but it can also be due to um, catecholamine effects, um, patients with pheochromocytoma, uh, uh, cocaine, methamphetamine, ephedrine, autonomic stimulation, vasopressor agents can act as um, inducing a catecholamine-like effect, and you can see these contraction bands. The way I describe them is they're kind of darkly eosinophilic bands, um, which are hypercontracted sarcomeres. They traverse the myocyte along the short axis in, in intermittent intervals. There is also an artifact that can mimic contraction band necrosis kind of caused by uh, chatter or smudging of the cardiac myocyte. Uh, mechanism in ischemia is due to reentry of calcium in uh, catecholamine type effects. Um, it could be also potentially calcium overload, but also potentially vasoconstriction of some port. But contraction band necrosis is a very characteristic microscopic appearance um, and something I could see as a test question. Since we talked about uh, cocaine on the last one and listed it, just to show this was an individual with a cocaine-induced myocarditis. On low power, you can see the extensive infiltrate all throughout the blue dots, all the lymphocytes and inflammatory cells and that that are there. And then under higher power, you can see extensive coagulative necrosis. Most of the cardiac myocytes in that uh, image at the right are uh, dead or dying. Um, they are hyper eosinophilic. Uh, the nuclei are pale or absent. There's a prominent inflammatory infiltrate, and at the arrow you can see some contraction bands. So summary, you tell me. As I said, this is a teaching technique based upon reflection. It makes you think about what you just read or saw. So on to the questions. First one, if you want to review it again, what you think the answer is. So a 26-year-old female presents to a primary care physician with complaints of shortness of breath during exercise and ongoing fatigue, four weeks after a short period of fever, congestion, and cough. So that would fit with an individual who's having some type of cardiac effects, some degree of failure after a viral prodrome, which would go along with a myocarditis. Um, the S3 gallop would also go along with some degree of heart failure. Um, to the right, what we see is, uh, pr at this power, prominent lymphocytic infiltrates, so this would go along with a lymphocytic myocarditis. Um, and of the choices, the one that is most likely to be a consequence of a lymphocytic myocarditis is a dilated cardiomyopathy. So second question. So this one's uh, tougher and is more related to um, the United States. Um, but what it is is on the right is this is... Um, um, in the distribution of the AV node, um, that's uh, AV nodal conduction tissue there, and you can see all the little blue dots. It's a prominent lymphocytic infiltrate. Um, so the um, 
rash that's described. That's the erythema marginatum, which is characteristic for Lyme disease. Um, and then uh, it's commonly, like I said, the main epicenter in the United States is the mid-Atlantic uh, New England states so of the choices. Maryland is the best answer. And then I'll just end with a picture from Montana. And that's it. Thank you.